Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Can I ask you guys a question? Think of a show that you really, really like. What would it take to make you quit it? Maybe it's a bunch of bad episodes in a row, or maybe it's a couple of bad seasons. Or maybe an episode can do something so horrendously abysmal that it makes you vow to never watch the show again. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a bad one today. One of the most horrifically bad episodes that I've ever seen from any show ever. Is it worse than One Course Meal? Oh yeah, it is. And we'll get to why that is. Speaking of that, Family Guy is probably the adult equivalent of Spongebob. It started out decently, and had a certain charm to it, but over the years, it got bad. I mean, we all know about the episode Not All Dogs Go to Heaven, where it's basically saying that all religious people are bigoted idiots, and that God doesn't exist because some women are not physically attractive. This is because the show has a massive ego. It was killed and came back twice. You cannot kill Family Guy, and the show knows it. Now on to this episode in particular, which is probably the worst cartoon episode ever made. The story starts with the Griffin family watching the news about a hurricane. Ah yes, this is part of a special where all three of Seth MacFarlane's shows had an episode involved during the same hurricane. Interesting idea for a ratings trap. But this episode doesn't have anything to do with any of the others. The satellite dish goes out, and we have a pointless cutaway. I know that it's Family Guy's thing to have random cutaways, but we're not even a minute in, and it already seems like they're trying to pad out this episode. Because, oh dear god, does it need padding. It has two subplots, and each of them are extremely weak. The, what I'm going to call B-plot, is Brian doing some magic mushrooms. And Stewie's there because why not? Have you ever had a bad psychedelic trip? The writer of this episode wants to show you a bad trip. Just so you guys are prepared for it when it hits, try using the splinter with Squidward and Clarinet Land and a bit of House Fancy. Now I'm calling it the B-plot because the A-plot is much, much worse. This is gonna be a fun one, isn't it? And now the A-plot begins. The Griffin family is bored. So we have a pointless charades bit, and then we have a pointless random noises bit. I wouldn't complain, except that none of this is funny! You know, I thought that this should be obvious, but an episode about being trapped in a house with no television shouldn't be as boring as being trapped in a house with no television. The animation in this episode is also as lazy as hell, at least in the A-plot. Notice how the characters barely move. In the B-plot, however, the animation is at least trying. Speaking of which, Brian's magic mushrooms start taking hold. Hey, it's random weirdness because that's funny. Honestly, if only it had stayed on that level. Brian slowly leaves the room, and then Peter decides to do something called finger banging. Uh-huh. When Meg tries to join in... Hey. Oh, no one wants to get finger banged by you, Meg. Why don't you just go do that to yourself, Meg? Yeah, her family don't like her any. Stewie runs upstairs to see Brian about to chop his own ear off with scissors. And we get to see it in all of its messy glory. Well, that's the house fancy part down. Ah, it's funny because a baby is playing with a severed limb while a dog is bleeding on the floor. Oh wait, that's not funny at all. That's actually really fucking disturbing. Luckily, Stewie manages to sew up Brian's ear. And then we see through Brian's point of view. You like my soothing voice? Return the map. Return what you have stolen from me. Okay, ignore them half-assedly trying to be disturbing, and what do you notice the most about this scene? That's right, it's a still frame with lips talking. You know, like cartoons from the 50s that didn't have a goddamn budget? Family Guy is one of the most profitable shows on television. There is no excuse for this. Back to the A-plot. Oh, hey, I got an idea. Let's have a sing-along. Okay, I'm gonna sing the opening chase music from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Guess how long this goes on for? 55 seconds. During it, Peter ends up annoying everyone. It ends when Meg opens up a soda, annoying Peter. When he barks at her, she actually stands up to him. That prompts the rest of the family to try to beat her down. Congratulations, you've actually managed to depict how dysfunctional families operate. Usually they place the blame for all their problems on one child. You know, like what they've been doing to Meg here for years. And to the B-plot, because our last excursion was so invigorating. Now we find out what the episode blew its animation budget on. Welcome to Wonderland's Hell. This scene tries as hard as possible to be disturbing. Can someone please remind me, because I tend to forget. Is Family Guy a comedy show? If so, how the fuck could any of this be considered funny? And no, I'm not playing that Nicolas Cage clip because it's the most annoying meme that the internet has ever spawned. Actually, I'm surprised that the episode didn't reference it itself. Stoners, can you please help me out here? Are bad trips anything like this? Or are the animators trying to freak people out with their own demented imaginations? And jump scare! And none of this is ever mentioned again. 
it's a big lift alligator moment. A big lift alligator moment. Yep, pretty much. They just spend about two minutes trying to disturb the fuck out of you with the most horrific imagery they could think of, and they're never going to mention it again. With half of the episode completely wasted, the A-plot can actually get on the roll. And because the writers don't know what the hell they're doing, we hear Brian drinking in the background because some idiot thought it could be considered comedy. Meg starts standing up to her family, starting with Chris. Now, this is awfully similar to putting your hoof down, isn't it? Where one character berated a couple of others. Well, here's the thing. The criticisms that Meg is dishing out towards her family are both truthful and they are hurtful towards her. This is how you do a reason you suck speech correctly. Now, here's the really, really strange part. If they didn't do that one part correctly, then this episode might not have been so bad. I think Brian's getting a little water in there. <laughs> Still drinking. <laughs> Peter, I want to shove a shotgun up your ass so badly. I'm just afraid that I'll get covered in your shit if I do. So while there is annoying water lapping in the background, Meg turns her criticisms on Lois. It's great because these are the exact criticisms that Family Guy fans have been lobbying for years. Oh, oh, oh God, that feels so much better. Hey, hey everyone. Oh, I'm sensing a lot of negativity here. It's amazing how they can make a character extremely annoying in the span of two minutes. And then we get a cutaway that's all kinds of racist but doesn't even bother to have its racism make sense. That cutaway, understandably, put Brian to sleep. Thank God. Or I guess in his case, thank Atheist God. So, Meg criticizes Lois. Oh, my problems? Oh, I see. Is this coming from my role model mother? The shoplifter, the drug addict, the porn star, the whore who let Gene Simmons and Bill Clinton go to town on her? And that turns her to tears. Since these things are actual problems, it comes off as very satisfying and cathartic. By the way, this dramatic zoom here, I love how they do it three goddamn times. Then Peter, being the idiot he is, calls Meg Harry Potter. It's his turn, and it actually takes a while for the criticisms to pierce his thick head. No education, you have no interest, you just do whatever reckless thing you want to do, whenever you want to do it, without regard for anyone else. Oh, 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 and when you're not terrorizing the community with your impulsive escapades, you're being a total jerk to your family. You shove your daughter's face in your ass and you fart on it. <laughs> if someone in the outside world could see the way you treat me, you would be in jail. <laughs> it eventually gets to him. He tells Lois to back him up, and that reduces them all to bickering. I mean, the whole damn family gets into a fight. And that leads us to another cutaway, trying way too hard to be racist. Peter runs away crying, and everyone else scatters. And then Brian starts to talk to Meg. You know that trope, the status quo is God? There is no way it could be done worse than it was done here. I mean, Roseanne making an entire season just a dream? That's nothing against what's about to happen. You know, that was, uh, that was pretty cool, the way you finally stood up to everybody. I don't know, Brian. I, I mean, I, I meant every word of it, but you saw what happened. What do you mean? They all turned on each other like a pack of wolves. Yeah, yeah, that tends to happen. People don't like to be criticized, so they end up throwing a tantrum. So what? That's not your problem. Do you think it's possible that, that this family can't survive without some sort of lightning rod to absorb all the dysfunction? Uh, lightning rod, huh? Wait for it. I'm gonna go into the next room and break a few windows to let my anchor cool so I can articulate how god-awful this piece of animation is. It's a, it's a theory, I guess. I mean, it, it's not ideal, but it's an important piece that maybe it's just my lot in life to provide. Maybe if I feel bad, they don't have to. Oh. It's that's incredibly noble and true. You know, I think you might be the strongest person in this house. The first thing I want to say, and I truly do mean it this time, is fuck you. Fuck you to hell and back, you insensitive, immature morons! You are suggesting the people who are being abused should stay in abusive relationships for their abuser's benefit. And this isn't played for laughs like Plankton's suicide attempt. This is dead straight. It's the moral of the episode. It is not noble to take someone else's shit in abuse. Yes, it takes a strong person to live in an abusive relationship, but it takes a stronger person to get out of it. If you're in an abusive relationship, then the best thing you could do is to get out of it. Tell someone, the authorities, your teacher, anyone. What about them and their benefit? Fuck them and their benefit. If someone is hurting you in such a way, they don't deserve to be a part of your life and never did in the first place. The only thing they deserve to be is a distant memory. But Family Guy, you would know that, wouldn't you? Because your very next episode was all about how domestic abuse is bad for everyone involved. I guess unless it's involving your butt monkey, right? Making an episode like that isn't covering your ass, it's making you a hypocrite! You know what? 
I don't want to continue. What else is there to say? Make apologizes to our abusers for calling them out on their abuse and continues to take the abuse. And this is apparently a happy ending because blah 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 the status quo is God. A vengeful God that wants the earth to burn and to send us all into hell. Hi, I'm Stewie Griffin. Tonight's Family Guy was a very special episode about drug use. But the simple fact is, it's no laughing matter. To learn more about drugs, visit your local library. There's probably a guy behind there who sells drugs. <laughs> because domestic abuse and dysfunctional families are just comedy. But yes, according to them, you should go find out about drugs by doing them. What the living hell? I say that this is worse than one course meal because no one's going to try to drive people to suicide because of it. But if just one person decides to stay in an abusive relationship because of this, it just eats me up. Maybe it was just an accident or an oversight. I don't give a shit. Someone somewhere should have had the foresight to realize that this was a terrible idea from the get-go. The comic relief was either annoying or stupid. The cutaways tried to be randomly racist and failed. It reeks of padding and disturbing imagery like it was trying to fall back on its moral. It really seems like teaching this was intentional. Your abuser is not worth caring about. And fuck you, family guy.